This video is an overview of uh, San Francisco residential architectural styles from 1920 until now. And if you want a more detailed view of an individual style, please uh, search my site or online for videos that are detailed. So we'll jump right into it. Um, here are the great streamlined modern building up on Telegraph Hill, uh, an excellent example of that style. We then jump right around the corner to the third barrier style and second barrier style right there on Telegraph Hill. Uh, this is right around the corner from that on Bay Street. And uh, just right down uh, the street from there is this great streamlined modern collection. So we have uh, block by block just this great mixing of different styles. Then you have things like this, which are kind of an embarrassment then and now. Uh, second barrier style, great hallmark. As soon as you see wrapping corner balconies, um, you've pretty much got second barrier style. Um, here, uh, postmodernism, kind of a uh, version of it. Uh, this, uh, the Walters House, is uh, justifiably famous. It's um, a great assured working out of the second barrier style. And then here we go to third barrier style with Joseph Eshrick. So you get the uh, verticals are exploited in third barrier style versus the horizontal in second barrier style. This is a hallmark William Worcester. You can see with the tapered beams. Uh, whenever you see that, you can pretty much be assured you've got a Worcester um, Eshrick used that detail a few times, but then developed his own different style. Uh, Postmodernism, what can I say? Uh, find the video on that. Uh, de definitely not my favorite style. Here, uh, Joseph Eshrick working out in 1951, um, his own language, his own vocabulary here in third barrier style. The boards are run vertically, the windows are exaggerated in size, uh, but what makes it third barrier style is the accentuation of the vertical. Uh, the thinness of the columns, the fineness, and the simplicity of the details. The idea was California rural buildings, but built by architects. They wanted very simply built, uh, very economical homes. Now, these were not, by any stretch of the imagination, economical homes, but they were serving as models for that. Here at uh, 3778 Washington, this is just a uh, a Shangri-La of a home to stumble onto. And admittedly, there were a lot of photographs of this home, but it is truly beautiful and remarkable. And Eric Mendelssohn was one of those architects who fled the Nazis and ended up working here in an architect's office. Um, here, Worcester Bernardine Emmons working out in 54, another great example of second barrier style. Uh, they used wood for their informal homes and brick for their formal homes. Here at the 3655 Clay house, um, the owners have done a great job with putting on a very sensitive rear wing addition. Uh, this shows how you actually get to the front door. Uh, and what they were doing in 42 was reimagining how one would live in a modern home. This has no uh, affiliation with the international style other than being a contemporary. Here's an example of Worcester working in the formal vocabulary of a brick home in the second barrier style. In the preceding slides, you saw the, saw the wraparound balcony that marked the uh, second barrier style. Here, uh, the Jackson home, uh, international style by Michael Goodman. International style did not have much effect here. We had other architects like Eshrick and Worcester doing different and wonderful things. Uh, here, Eshrick uh, modifies a 1900 shingle style home with big blocky windows. Here, the second barrier style, just right down the block from that from that Eshrick home. Here, they're using the there you see at the corner window, um, and as soon as you see that and these uh, canted volumes, you've pretty much assured you've got a second barrier style. Here, third barrier style, the colliding shed forms. This home at 3085 Pacific is probably the first home when Eshrick really worked out the horizontal versus the vertical. And this is a great snapshot in time. This is the, uh, the laboratory, as it were, of the starting of this style with Eshrick's own watercolor showing his conflict between the horizontal and the vertical. And then Eshrick firmly coming down on the side of vertical. Uh, that's explored here in the inside with the uh, the doors and windows. And here it looks across the street at what he would do in three years, in 1952, in this style. And he's working in one of his favored uh, mediums, shingles. Uh, he seemed to favor those versus uh, vertical boards, but he did use both. Um, here, uh, right around the corner on Pacific, the second barrier style by Worcester Murray Emmons at the very end of that style. Here, new modernism, uh, where volumes are dressed in their own 
materials, and the materials are telling the truth about what it is they, the materials are and what they're doing. Here's Streamline Might Earn. I mean, who doesn't love this style? It's uh, as if Le Corbusier had, had you know, three or four highballs in the lounge of the, of the Normandy crossing the Atlantic and kind of loosened up a bit. Here, second Bay Area style at Raycliffe Terrace. Now, Raycliffe Terrace is definitely worth a walk. Again, here at Pacific, right across the street from one uh, Raycliffe Terrace, this is an enclave of Bay Area modernism, and it's, I, I encourage you to take a walk up on Raycliffe Terrace to see what's happening from 1937 through uh, the mid-60s. Uh, a great, great uh, neighborhood. We're streaming Ernie Nemens uh, here, 37 to 1951, Joseph Eshrick here at Raycliffe Terrace, and here he's done away with the overhangs. Here is Third Bay Area at its worst, just an awful exploration of what the, that style would become. Here, postmodernism, uh, just uh, unfortunate things happened. Uh, very planar style, uh, wants to be knowledgeable and whimsical and uh, learned. It just is thin in so many ways. Going back to 37 uh, Worcester, here you can see the corner balconies, the interior, the internal corner balcony in here the external corner balcony. Right across the street on Pacific, another great second Bay Area style. You can see the splayed rafters supporting the corner balconies and the great corner windows that are defining the style. Right around the corner, uh, 2465 Pacific, we can see um, an Eshrick style vertical emphasis on that building. Here, Streamline Modern. Now, you could argue that the rails are a bit bulky for that style, and I would agree with you. Um, here, uh, the first use of the canted box window. Here, uh, Dinwiddie does it quite well and everyone else apes the style. Here, uh, an unfortunate example of international style at its clinical and most soulless. Worcester, again, 1939, doing a great job with the uh, second barrier style. Here, this is a typical home in the second barrier style, 1955, horizontal infinite emphasis, uh, simple materials. Uh, this is the very end of Streamline Modern, 1950. Uh, jumping back to 37, the international style, which, as I said, didn't have much effect here, but Neutra and Winkler did a great job in the double house for Dr. Schiff. Um, I was so impressed when I went here. I am not a fan of the international style, but this home is photogenic in the extreme. The materials are uh, exploited. They're very well used, uh, subtle and beautiful. Uh, the doors themselves are great works of metalwork and uh, glass. Then as we come down the stair, you see the great uh, uh, green tile and the very simple gray banding and the white walls. Jumping back to Streamline Modern, uh, here we see a very early example, 1929, and they're just figuring out what the style means. Uh, jumping to 29 Art Deco, where it's a, a simple uh, exploration of two different facades. This home is rather sad, 30 Barry to style up on uh, uh, Clenenden. Uh, Eichler-esque, a very fun home, uh, just screams love. This is a great uh, pride of ownership in this home. Second barrier style, all the hallmarks I've been talking about are here. The wraparound corner balcony, the uh, corner windows, and the great um, exploration of the horizontal. There's a great shot just showing it hovering over the city. Uh, unfortunate example, uh, this is right up the road at 2 Glenbrook, where the owners just don't understand uh, what Second Barry style is about. Here are George Rockrise doing Third Barry style. Here, uh, Callister, uh, great local architect working in uh, uh, a writing influenced and Japanese influenced architecture. Yeah, who doesn't have an Eichler? I mean, they are very photogenic, very uh, forward looking homes. Uh, simply built of post and beam construction, very durable materials, uh, colorful usually at the front door. At 2 Digby we have the third Bay Area style, just an unfortunate example of that style. Here's a peaked roof Eichler and you can see how just the little bit of fence makes that entry so welcoming there at the atrium. Here New Modernism up on Laidley and uh, <laughs> here's jumping back to postmodernism, just ouch, I mean just Retina hurting stuff, uh, not aging well, did not look good when it went up, and it definitely doesn't look good now. Uh, palm trees were definitely required in postmodernism. Palm trees are everywhere, as well as just this uh, retina burning 
uh, color uh, stuff thrown to the outside of buildings. Here we have stage set cartoonery. New Modernism is also up on Laidley, uh, the homage to uh, Second Barrier Style as shown here on Rhode Island. Uh, the uh, uh, Second Barrier Style is all over the city. Here is just an anonymous home up on 21st Street, but showing all the hallmarks of that style, the canted windows, the horizontal emphasis. Uh, just simply built, but probably a very nice home on the inside. Here, Art Deco. Uh, we have great examples of Art Deco in the city. Most of the country is uh, pretty sparsely popula populated with Art Deco homes. We have uh, an embarrassment of riches when it comes to Art Deco homes. And this one here at 99th, 99 17th Street is a perfect example of the style. Um, it's been repainted recently uh, with rather subdued colors, uh, but much better uh, choices than the previous garish colors, like are represented here at the Douglas Street Art Deco home. Uh, what can I say? It's just, okay. Uh, here at Seacliff, a, a much more restrained version of Art Deco. Uh, a great, great home. Uh, rare in San Francisco is that it's free on all four walls. Here, right down the street from that, is the second Bay Area style at uh, 12th 12 25th Avenue. Uh, very simply uh, built home. This one, third Bay Area style. Not quite sure what Frank Lloyd Wright meant to this architect, but he definitely did not grasp the Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright's concepts. Uh, these are unfortunate. This Worcester Marine Ammons was destroyed, as is this one in mid destruction uh, by the third Bay Area style. I call it Neo Deco Shiny Asian, which is just awful. Uh, it's just they painted all the wood. Uh, like with sp uh, shiny spar varnish and went from there. Uh, here, going, jumping back to Second Bay Area style, another great Worcester Bernardi and Emmons home. You can see there on the corner uh, windows and the, the corner splayed rafters. Here, a great streamlined modern home, uh, very uh, carefully kept up. Here, jumping back to the marina for a new modernism. And I was actually quite happy to see this home go up. It means the, that the marina is not stuck in the 1920s and new things can happen. Here with New Modernism, everything has its own material uh, and its own color, each volume does. Here in the marina, speaking of uh, the 1920s, jumping to Art Deco and uh, Streamline Modern. This is a great home up on Francisco and Bret Hart. It really stopped me in my tracks. A, a great home with wraparound corners, these extensions of the horizontals. Everything is uh, a, a great snapshot of the 1950s. Here, uh, a 1934 international style home by uh, uh, Richard Neutra. And here in 35, again, another great home by Neutra up on, Lar up on Hopkins, the very famous Largent House. Uh, here at the back, uh, you can see a, a uh, history of additions and alterations to the home. Uh, this is a very concealed home on Leavenworth, also by Neutra. Uh, this is a, an unfortunate example of Streamline Modern Revival, which doesn't quite work. Uh, 